LMI for All is a database being developed by the UK Commission for Employment and Skills to provide access to labour market information. Labour market information can be valuable in many different contexts, although initially we've been focusing on its use for careers guidance. The data comes from a variety of sources, including the Office for National Statistics and the Higher Education Statistical Agency. To provide access to the data, we've created an API, an application programming interface. This allows anyone to develop their own desktop or mobile application, either just using data from LMI for All, or mixing it with other data, media, and information from other sources, and creating standalone applications, or embedding LMI data within other websites. My name is Graham Atwell from Pontedusky in Wales. Together with Philip Rustemeyer, I work on the technical development side of LMI for All. We're producing a series of short how-to videos, giving practical help on using the LMI for All API. In this first video, Philip shows how to get started with programming the API, developing a simple search query. To accompany the video, all the code is accessible from this web page. OK, that's the introduction. Now over to Philip. Um, we're going to start with a, with a simple app using stuff that you've probably already seen, uh, if you've done even a little bit of web development. Uh, if you haven't, that's not a problem, because uh, we're going to start from the basics, really. Um, this tutorial will feature stuff that's entirely free, so there's no cost to you. And so it's uh, relatively easy and completely free to get started. Sounds good. OK. Away you go when you're ready, Philip. Uh, so first, I'm uh, on the left. I have my my command line. So I'm, I'm, no, I'm using Linux, but th this will work on Windows and on, on Mac OS, uh, whatever you like. Uh, this will work. Um, so I'm uh, on the left, I have, have my command line. This is where the code's going to go. On the right, I have the browser, which is where our stuff will be running, so we can test it. So first, I'm going to make a folder. You call it uh, check query, maybe, because we're going to an app using jQuery. So um, jQuery is a library that helps you do web stuff quickly. So let's do that. And you were telling me before there's ever approaches that in jQuery you could use, but the jQuery is a very quick way of doing it. Exactly. You, you could uh, write all this stuff by hand, but um, it's, it's a bit troublesome to do that. So we're going so, to download uh, jQuery. Uh, you just click this thing. And we will be fine with... We'll take jQuery 2. If you have a really old browser like Internet Explorer 8 or 9, um, You'll have to use jQuery 1, but most modern browsers should uh, use jQuery 2, which is a bit faster. So we'll take uh, the compressed and production-ready jQuery, and we will save that. And to look pretty, we'll also use uh, Bootswatch, which is a set of three, three themes. Exactly, three themes that make your website look a little bit prettier. Uh, we'll use, I don't know, Wilpix, Wilpix, Wilpix Slate, yeah, why not? I'll download this, save it. Okay, so I'm going to keep this open to just sort of look at how things are supposed to look so I can inspect them in the browser, okay. and see, see what works. Um, I'm going to keep this open because I'll be needing the documentation to use jQuery properly. And I'll keep this open because I'll, I'll be needing the API documentation. Right. OK, so we're going to start by making an index.html file, which is your sort of start page for your app. So um, I'm going to open this. And to properly simulate that, uh, we're going to pretend we have a local web server running instead of you know just opening the file because later in, uh, if you put it out on the web it will be running on a web server too so that's that's the ideal environment to test it okay. so um, I'm going to open the shell here uh, 
and I'm just going to start. Oops, sorry. Just going to start another web uh, the web server. Uh, I'm using the PHP built-in web server, which if, is a PHP program language. If you have that installed, you can use just use that. Um, if you're on Windows and uh, you, you need one, you can just download uh, Tiny Web from Red Labs, which is just a little thing that puts your stuff online. Um, there are also others out there, so I just Google. Um, you can use one that's free because uh, you don't really need anything that's that's paid uh, to, to get a web server running. So, okay, now I have a web server running. Uh, I can visit that. So this is my app, basically. Now, first we'll include um, Bootstrap, which, which makes it look prettier. And we'll need jQuery. Uh, that's that's the the built-in browser uh, developer bar. Okay. So mo most browsers have this usually if you press uh, F12 on your computer, and you can use that to inspect stuff in the web page. So this is uh, the page I've built up in case there's something wrong. And this has a JavaScript console <clears throat> where you can check your code. For example, if I've loaded jQuery, it should be available under the, uh, as the dollar sign. Okay. Yeah, some some things there. So so that's that's working. And to start out, we are going to um, find the SOC code for an occupation from the API. So a SOC code to standard do... Standard occupational classification, yeah. Exactly. Uh, standard occupation classification, that, which means that um, for any job you have, um, there's going to be a, a four-digit code associated with it that you need to explore uh, all the other bits of the API. So we can use that in the API Explorer. If you go to SOC, and we search for, um, let's do gardeners, maybe. And we see we have uh, some stuff available there. And this is basically what we want to um, build in our own app. Um, we'll allow the user to put in a value, and it'll search for the matching SOC codes using the API. First, we need to put in a little box. Let's let's watch. Let's see. This looks nice. So let's see what's it got. Okay, so we can see it's got the class set, and we'll need a button. So nothing happens yet when we do that. So we need to add some code to make everything work. So we create a file. So I'm I'm creating an empty file called app.js, and uh, I'm going to load that into my page as well. Okay, um, using jQuery, we can add uh, we can add actions to to things on the page uh, using something called event listener. So when an event happens on the page, like the user clicking a button, um, uh, the app code will perform some action. So uh, um, you do this by writing dollar sign something in parentheses. And this means uh, that whatever I put in here will be executed. So, well, we want to make it do something. So let's let's make a placeholder. Well, in the end, we want to make it perform a search. So we, we'll call it perform, and uh, we'll just make that an alert. And put something in there later. So okay, when the page, we want that to happen. When uh, we want to attach that to the button, so that it works when it's clicked. So the button has an ID which is here, and it's called do search. And we can use that. We can say, OK, jQuery, take the but sorry, take the button with the ID. What I do? Take the button with the ID, uh, do search, and attach an event call. So okay, when the page is loaded, take that button, and when it's, and, uh, when it's clicked, uh, perform the search. So we load this, and we click this, and then we get the code working. Okay, so now we actually perform the search, and that's actually uh, hard at all. We just go to the API, and the API will helpfully give us the link that we need to perform the search. So we can see here that this is the 
and uh, it's got something called Q, which is a query parameter. And that's just where we put our search term. So um, we'll take this and we'll go a variable. That's very easy, isn't it? Hopefully. Um, and then we can just go, okay, jQuery, uh, get me JSON result, which JSON is, is this sort of stuff here where it's, where it's, where it's got some sort of structure. Um, and we'll say, okay, get J, um, oh, sorry, for, first we need to get the search terms. So we say, we want the search terms from that input box and it's got an ID as well, which is here. So we say, okay, get me the search terms. And from that, we want the value. Uh, if you want to look this up, this is all in, in the jQuery documentation. Oh, yeah. Get the current value of the first element in the set of matched elements. Um, basically, um, you say dollar sign, somehow describe which element on the page you mean, and then you can perform any of these functions on it, one of which is get the value of the, of the input field. So we'll do that. Actually, we'll make a little test first. We'll, go, we'll say, OK. Okay, that seems to work fine. So now, jQuery, okay, jQuery, get us this stuff, which is, let us see, it's Ajax, and we have get JSON, load JSON encoded data from the server. So this is what we want to do. So we say, okay, uh, we want the search URL plus the search terms. And then we need to provide a function that result data. Okay. So what will happen, jQuery will, will um, call the, the API with our search terms stuck together as, as one URL. So it forms uh, this sort of thing. Yeah and it'll get the results, and uh, the results will be handed to this function as uh, in a called result. So let's, uh, let's actually, actually, let's just put that out for now. I'll log it to the console. Let's see. Okay, it did that. And now in the console, we can just have sort of, sort of have a look at stuff, see what's happening. Okay, it's downloading stuff and putting it to the console. So now we need to put that um, onto, maybe let's do a table, something like that. So we'll do, we'll do this. Um, we have job title. So what we want to do now is we want to, if we search for something, we want the results to appear in the table below. So, so we, have a, we have a bunch of results here. We can ask Jake, Make a sort of table row. So we say, okay, um, make us a row. And this is a table cell. So you have you have tr, which is a row, and the row contains two ths, which is a, a table header cell, which is you know bold text stuff like that. And the normal cell is uh, td. Um, so if I replace this, this uh, I, I want to add more rows into the body of this table with our results. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I'm constructing those the same way, table row containing uh, two table cells. So I, open, I have here the row starts here, then I start a cell here, end the cell there, start another here, end it there, and then end the row here. The code is uh, result. Then we add those to the, to the row. Then we add the whole row to the table, which I think needs an ID. Yeah. Whole row and appended the cells into it. Um, give me the body of this of the sock table uh, thing. Okay. So that works. So that's it. A quick app. Running in a few minutes.
Yeah, yeah it's really it's really not that much code actually. It's I think this uh, this is not you know it's it's not it's not a, a daunting task as you might uh, maybe think when you hear you're going to to program or code something. So I think this is this is stuff that anyone uh, can do. I mean, you, uh, for free, all the tools are, are freely available. Um, I should mention that uh, I think you can see on the left that. My code editor has, said, has, you know, lots of colored bits, and uh, it shows which which tags belong together in the HTML and stuff like that. Um, there are also ones uh, I'm, I'm using one that's called Vim, uh, which may be a bit advanced, but uh, there are also ones that are free that um, work really well uh, for you. For example, for Windows, there's Notepad++, uh, which I usually recommend because uh, it's free. It's this really small thing, and uh, it does most of what you need for programming. So that's really all you need to get started. You need a little editor, you need a web browser, and some way of running uh, a little web server on your computer. Well, thanks very much, Philip, for your time this afternoon. It's very amazing watching the sort of code just unfolding in front of your eyes. I fear, I, I'm very tempted to think I'm going to want to try and do that myself. I'm afraid I think it's going to take a little longer than it took you. This video is produced under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike license.